So, so as you may know, um, the people that you know work on dbGaP are really fastidious, but you would still probably be amazed to see the number of JIRA tickets that went into planning this event, mostly led by Laura, who's uh, walking around taking pictures. Um, but what I must say is they, uh, they asked the folks presenting uh, to send us their slides rather early. And I must say that the next two presenters were the, uh, the only ones that sent them to them uh, that early. So, so I have to congratulate these people for that. And uh, so without further ado, so uh, on behalf of Elizabeth Glanders and myself, we really appreciate the invitation to be here today. We're very excited to celebrate the 10-year anniversary. We decided it would be difficult to split a 10-minute talk into two five-minute talks, so I will just be presenting. Uh, the, the goal of our presentation uh, is to highlight our challenge or competition, Up for a Challenge, Stimulating Innovation in Breast Cancer Genetic Epidemiology. And this project would not have been possible without the support from DBGAP and the Data Access Committees. So outline the presentation will provide you a rationale for doing a breast cancer genetic epidemiology challenge, highlight the goals of the competition, describe the entries and evaluations, and provide an overview of the winners of the challenge. So we know that genome-wide association studies, or GWAS, have been very successful at identifying a common genetic variants associated with disease. And shown on this slide, you show the, the pictures of the chromosomes, and the little dots are the significant associations. And in pink, there are the significant SNP cancer associations from the GWAS catalog. And there are over 700 as of April 2017. So despite the success, uh, we know that there's a large proportion of the genetic risk that's still unexplained. And to date, many of the genome-wide association studies have focused on reporting only single variant associations, providing an opportunity to perhaps do more sophisticated analyses by combining different variants or genes into pathways. So why did we decide to focus on breast cancer? Well, breast cancer is the most common cancer in women in the United States. One in nine women is diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime, and it's estimated over 200,000 cancers in women in 2015, and these numbers are the same for 2017. There are also racial and ethnic differences in breast cancer risk and outcomes. And there's also an opportunity to utilize uh, existing data sets for breast cancer. At the time we started planning this, we're, we knew of several genome-wide association studies available for breast cancer or that existed for breast cancer, but also there were a large number of breast cancer cases within the Cancer Genome Atlas and, and breast cancer or breast in uh, the GTEx program. So there, you could develop methods that integrate these different types of data sets. So I talked to you about, uh, on the previous slide, GWAS associations uh, in cancer, and there are over 700. As far as breast cancer, we've identified uh, more than 90 common genetic variants associated with breast cancer by GWAS. Shown here on this side, we're looking at the relative uh, risk on the, the y-axis and the minor allele frequency. And then the bottom of this, you see the large number of genetic variants that have been identified at GWAS associated with breast cancer. But in addition to these common genetic variants, you see the rare mutations such as BRCA1 and BRCA2 and rare variants associated with breast cancer, which are associated with a higher relative risk. So together, this data tells you that genetics has a big role in the risk of breast cancer. The other thing it, that you get from this graph, if you're looking at the percentage of the, the genetic contribution of risk that these variants explain, they only explain about 50% of the genetic contribution, which means there's a lot more left to be found in breast cancer. So therefore, we thought there was an opportunity to develop more sophisticated methods to look at pathways with breast cancer, and we launched this competition to use innovative approaches to identify novel pathways involved in breast cancer susceptibility. The competition was launched in June 2015, and submissions were due in February of 2016, and uh, we had announced the winners late last year. So what were the goals of our challenge? We wanted to make breast cancer genetic epidemiology data more widely available when consistent with participant-informed consent. We wanted to increase the number and diversity of minds tackling a tough scientific problem and foster broader collaborations. We wanted to shift the focus of analysis from individual genetic variants to pathways and encourage the use of more innovative approaches in studying this data. We wanted to also explore the heritable contribution to breast cancer disparities. And the hope is, is that through these findings will ultimately lead to new biological insights into breast cancer. 
shown in this cartoon is a diagram of the seven data sets that were made available for the Breast Cancer Challenge uh, within dbGaP. Four of these data sets were not previously available in dbGaP before the challenge. So early on in our uh, challenge process, we, re we reached our goal to broaden data sharing. Uh, we also have to thank dbGaP for the work that they did to, to help us get these data sets ready for the challenge and create these data sets and make them available. In addition, the three data sets that were already in dbGaP, those investigators provided even more additional imputed data for the purposes of the competition, and dbGaP worked with us to make those ready in time. You could see also from this diagram, we see different uh, racial and ethnic groups, so there's an opportunity in using these data sets to look at uh, race differences in breast cancer. And the last thing is we worked with the data access committees to help facilitate access to the data sets to, to expedite the process for the participants who had registered for the competition. So this slide is an overview of what happened during the competition. We had over 200 people who registered for the challenge and 33 teams were approved for data access in dbGaP. This resulted in 15 submission entries into the challenge and 88 participants were part of the teams for those 50, the 15 submissions. So we reached some of the goals of trying to broaden the people looking at uh, the, the GWAS data. Only 40% of the individuals who participated in the challenge had ever had an NIH grant. They came from a variety of self-identified fields, including biology and genetics, uh, but also statistics and computational biology. We had a large number of participants on the teams, a medium of five individuals on the team, and over 80% of the team pairs were new collaborations. One of the goals was also to get people to integrate different data types, and nine of the entries used other data sets and data resources in addition to the dbGaP data. So on the slides overview of how we evaluated the uh, entries, the scoring was done by an evaluation panel of expert extramural scientists. They scored the entries based on the identification of novel findings, the replication of their novel findings, the innovation of the approach that was used, uh, the evidence of novel biological hypothesis, and the new collaborations that were formed on the team. After they've scored the entries, the top scoring entries were reproduced by our data scientists, a collaborator at Sage Bio Networks, and challenge leader Sarah Lindstrom. And then these were reviewed by NIH judges and selection was made by the NCI director. We wanted our evaluation to be consistent with NIH efforts to enhance reproducibility. So we require the competitors to provide us also, in addition to their entry results, the annotated code so that we could rerun the code. The reproduction of their findings was a requirement for them to win the competition. I will say that this was much more challenging than we had initially anticipated. We had to go back and forth with the submitters several times to get clarity on like the order of steps and, and how things were uh, the right environments to run the code. So I think that this is a lesson learned as far as you know, how people interpret providing and the level of annotation needed for the reproduction. On this slide is the overview of the teams who won the competition. We had a tie for the grand prize, Team UCSF and UN, uh, University of Minnesota CS Bio, and our second place team was Team Transcription. Team UCSF used all seven of the U4C data sets and it performed a genome-wide association of gene expression analysis and then they did replication with an outside data set from the UK Biobank. And they identified three genes, uh, new genes associated with breast cancer. The UMNCS Bio team performed pathway-pathway interaction analysis using a method that they had developed in yeast. And so they had not worked with uh, human GWAS data before, so this competition opened them up to the scientific field. And they identified steroid hormone biosynthesis interaction with acute myeloid gene sets. And then the second place team, Team Transcription, uh, was a computational biology group in, which examined transcription factor binding motifs implicated in GWAS regions. And they also had not worked with GWAS data before this competition. And they found a polymorphism which disrupted a transcription factor binding and affect expression of a gene in breast cancer. So what did they win? The two grand prize winners won $20,000 and the second place team won $10,000. The top scorers were invited to uh, prepare manuscripts in PLOS Genetics, and these are currently under review, and they were highlighted in our NCI uh, web pages. I have to thank the data contributors for, uh, and the study participants for the data for this competition. 
And I also have to thank the many people who are involved in the, uh, the administration of this competition. So I hope that I have shown you that we are opportunities, that the challenge shows opportunities to better leverage our existing data to develop new methods and also find new findings. But none of this would have really been possible without DBGAP and the, the Data Access Committee. So thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? That was great. I really love that novel approach to getting scientists engaged with the data. Do you have any plans for follow-up challenges or doing something similar in the future? Uh, so we have been talking about it, and I think so. we've been talking about it and just haven't quite geared up because we're uh, trying to get that last paper out the door. <laughs> and so we hope to. Well, thank you. <laughs>